is my team. Dude, this was, this thing about Tristan looking like Pop Smoke is Oh, that's hilarious. So funny. That was funny. It literally looks like him. Literally, literally looks just like him. That's oh what my God. Like. Yeah. Did he dress up as Pop Smoke? No, no he didn't. That was just whatever his fashion designer gave him. Wow. Yeah. All right, what are we talking about? Okay, so I know we've told you all about the awesome podcast from Just Women Sports, including their flagship podcast, the Just Women Sports podcast, hosted by U.S. Women's National Team champ Kelly O'Hara and T with A and Fee, hosted by the WNBA's Asia Wilson and Nafisa Collier. But there's another one we want to shout out. It's Snacks, hosted by U.S. Women's National Team All-Stars and North Carolina Courage teammates Lynn Williams and Sam Hughes. On the pod, Lynn and Sam talk about life, soccer, and everything in between. And they talk to the game's greatest, including Megan Rapinoe, Crystal Dunn, Midge Purse, Rose Lavelle, Tiana Davidson, and more. They get real about life on and off the field and have some fun, too. Check it out wherever you get your audio. One of the things I love about betting my favorite sports is that I'm always finding new player props or game props that I like. And what's cool about FanDuel Sportsbook is you can combine these props with other bets from the same game to score an even bigger payout. It's called a same game parlay bet, and you can only find them on FanDuel. Same game parlay is just one of the reasons I bet with FanDuel. It's easy to register, easy to deposit, easy to find your bet, easy to place your bet fast during a game if you see a trend you like. And the best part, when you win, FanDuel pays your winnings in as little as 24 hours. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today to create a same game parlay and use promo code ROADTRIPPIN at sign up. New users get their first bet risk-free up to $1,000. FanDuel will refund you up to $1,000 back in site credit if you don't win. That is promo code ROADTRIPPIN so they know I sent you. Disclaimer, 21 years and older and present in Colorado, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. First online real money wager only. Site credit is non-withdrawable and expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See sportsbook.fanduel.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado. 1-800-BETS-OFF for Iowa. 1-800-9-WITH-IT, Indiana. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Virginia, Tennessee Redline, 1-800-889-9789. In Tennessee, or visit www.1800gambler.net for West Virginia. Cheers. Welcome to this edition of Road Trip and presented by FanDuel. I'm your host, Ali Clifton, alongside Channing Fry, Richard Jefferson. You guys, I really just struggled to say all that. Why? Because we haven't recorded a podcast in I don't even know how long. It's been like three days. I wrote down, welcome to this edition of FanDuel, presented by Road Trippin'. That's literally what I wrote down. But here we are. Here we uh, are. Channing, shout out. Where is that shirt from? Uh, when I really uh, retired. Shirt. What? When I, my, the last game, they made these shirts. It was, it's very comfy. I found it. I still That's have a, a shirt, actually from uh, uh, Eloise's wedding when I sent my suit back from Scotland. I think that was like four, three, four years ago. You haven't, you haven't opened, opened it up? the box up. Because <laughs> we're going through our attic. Look at that. It's like still there's a suit and a bunch of clothes in there. I have no clue what what's in it. Hey, I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than just shipping shit home. There's nothing better when you can ultimate flex on people and you don't need clothes in a box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a timely God. conversation. Uh all right, you guys want to dive into the NBA? Is that what we want to talk about? Yeah, yeah let's talk about basketball. Yeah, we're two weeks in and I feel like there's a bunch of surprises. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just read you a couple? Please. This is please. based off of obviously it's Monday. So the ESPN rankings come out and for the week that was, um, let's do, first of all, the top five, according to ESPN. Top okay. five. Miami. <laughs> number one. That's not funny. Miami, <laughs> number one. Kyle Lowry guys, eight points, four boards, seven assists. He was a plus 51 in four games last, last week. That's, they went four. Okay, and like Kyle Lowry. Hang on. Is- Jimmy Butler. Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Okay. He averaged 28, 8, 5, 3 steals. And Miami beat teams by an average of 18 points last week. Four okay. Points. One of those okay. was Here the we go. Nets. Another was Charlotte. Both. Oh, the Nets are not 
Oh, I guess they're eight, three, nine. Mets look like trash, even though All they're right. so good. But they're just working themselves into shape. Yeah. Like, so you got, Elders balled out. You've got Miami who went 4-0. Oh. You've got Indy when we're talking about the East who went 0-4 oh last <laughs> week. Two losses to the Raptors. So you have Miami at one. You've got the Jazz at two, the Warriors at three, New York at four, and the Bulls. The Bulls. Not just in the East. The Bulls at number five. What saved them is that win versus Utah. That win versus Utah, which was a legitimate win uh, in Chicago. Yeah, they beat them. They got beat. Oh, yeah, in Chicago. But they got beat by the Knicks in Chicago as well. Yeah, they got beat by the Knicks. That was their first loss. And so everybody was like, uh... How good are they? They haven't played any. They they beat the teams they should have beaten, but yeah. then Utah comes rolling in, and they did a good job. I felt it was back and forth. I watched that game because that was like the first – to me, that was the first super test. How do you handle that first loss to the Knicks, who, who are, we know are a good team? But Utah is one of the best teams in the league. They and did business. Chicago, Chicago handed their business. They beat them, and you're just like, okay, the Chicago Bulls are real, but they do have some – they have some injuries, I feel like, lingering. Oh, Zach Levine's got Williams. Four. Yeah, they that's, have that's William. a huge loss because I feel like he would be the difference maker when if we play Boston in the first round. You're like, hey, go guard Jalen Green for a second and DeRose, you know. Yeah. Like Jalen Green's been balling. Jason Tatum's been doing solid. Uh, but like, okay, Miami. Who Jalen Green? Jalen huh? Brown. Jalen Brown. Oh, yeah. I was having the same moment. I was like Jalen Brown. A lot of yeah. a lot of brown, green, white, Kobe <laughs> White, Jalen Green. <laughs> Jalen Brown, Jalen Suggs, a lot of Jalen's and greens and colors. But Miami, last year, Miami, I think, struggled a lot because Tyler Hero was playing point guard a lot of the time. He's not a point guard. So when you bring in the most winningest Raptor player of all time at point guard, NBA champion Kyle Lowry, everyone just has to do what they're supposed to do. Like, I have, I have like, seen them get bogged down, and he just like, give me the ball, move out the way, come set this screen. Here's a play. Like, he doesn't need to average. He might average 12 points for the year, and they might be number one. He's he's so, so important because, like you said, if you have a guy like Jimmy or Tyler Hero that are forced to score and create for other players, like we saw that in the finals. Jimmy just got – Jimmy was just exhausted. He was defending. He was rebounding. He was running pick and rolls. He, You know, and they lost – they lost – you know, like Drogic was such an important piece to what they were doing. And so that's why the Drogic Bam out of bio pick and roll was so important. Now you got him that can like Tyler, you run off screens, right? Oh, Jimmy, I'll help feed you. I'll make sure that the, the system is running and you just do what you do. Uh, I think that's what makes them so, so deadly. When you have a bunch of people that are doing their roles, I think without, I think last year, especially with the injuries and all that stuff last year, Miami just had a lot of guys that were trying to like do different things. Yeah. Now they have guys that can settle in and I just do my job. You do your job. And they all do it at a high if level. Victor Oladipo could come back 50%. Just be 50%. That's even nastier of mm-hmm. a front court, right? right? Cause you have like Kyle Lowry solid, Victor solid, hero solid, Robinson solid, Jimmy solid, Marquis solid. Like you're just solid. And they're all tweeners, and you can play. Oh God! Oh, okay. well, yeah. Well, you're eating burrito while you're talking to us. So it's a good burrito. You yeah. know, there's always that one spot that's cold, but the rest is like <laughs> molten hot. That's a microwave burrito, if it I is. ever. <laughs> it, is. it literally is. Uh, when, no. you, when you chew with your mouth open, it looks like mashed potatoes. So. Ew. Sick. Ew. Um, (laughs) okay. So you know how every season is too. It starts out early and you've got all of these, you've got the veteran team still trying to find their way. I mean, you have the Milwaukee bucks who are sitting at 10 right now. We talked about the Hawks and where we thought they would be their nine. Obviously, you know, the story with the nets, uh, the Sixers are at six. Um, so you have the Knicks bulls, wizards, heat all at five and one at the top of the East, the Hornets at number five. Are there any pretenders in that five and one slate, the top four? Wait, what did you just say? Who are the teams again? It has Knicks, to be Bulls, right. Wizards, Heat at five and one. Knicks, and then you've got the Hornets at five and two. Knicks. So the Hornets, I would say they are they are going to make it. Do I think that they'll sustain this? Like, I think Bridges might have a bit of a trouble averaging 26 throughout. <laughs> no, that's not saying he's not going to average 20. I'm not saying that. But he yeah. averaged 30. You, you know, he was averaging like 28. He was uh, Eastern Conference player of the week. I think either last week or the week before, like he's making a serious jump and 
to me, it is very similar to when you play with a great point guard that all of a sudden who this player was and who this player can be is completely different, right? You put him next to LaMelo and he's put in the work. He's like worked on his jump shot. He's improved. Like he, you know, has all the athleticism in the world, but I just don't know if those guys, I think if they finish fifth, I think that seems like it is versus saying that they're going to finish in the top four because that's a long journey. That's a long journey. Let's, let's just be real. The, the Milwaukee Bucks are legit. Like Drew Holiday hasn't been playing. They just want to chip. You know, at the beginning of the year, they're just like Giannis is trying new things. I don't think, I think they'll be third or fourth. I just don't think they're like that. I don't think that they are that gung-ho about where they are. Their health is more important. Let I me mean, ask you like, this then. Is that number one seed, does it carry and hold the value? You should ask the Utah that? Jazz about that. It does. No, <laughs> don't. No, it, do, it does. Well, too. That's the truth. It, Utah's one of the top two teams every year, and then they get their head busted in the playoffs. Yeah, but this is it does carry weight, Channing, because look at what, hap- what happened with Brooklyn and Milwaukee. Philadelphia had a much easier path. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about one through three. You're talking about Philly versus Brook. Or no, you're talking about Milwaukee versus Brooklyn in the second round. Two of the teams that were favored to win a championship, two of the top five teams in the league were going at it in the second round. Like, yes, it does matter if you can avoid some of that shit. Oh, if oh, you can yeah, avoid yeah, that, yeah. then yes. Right. But, but overall, you still got to win. You still got to show up. But I think that's where you see the difference between being one and then two or three. What about the Wizards? Yeah, I'm not rolling. I'm not rolling. It's hard for me to say that. I think it's. Oh, shit, it shouldn't be. It's, I didn't, I thought they'd be middle of the pack. I'm shocked that they're no, the pack team Chris would be the middle of the Pac-12. What middle are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, I'm not counting them out. I think Spencer is playing good. I don't know if you're going to see Kyle Kuzma average 20 throughout the year. And, he's and, not right now, but he is sitting at sixth and rebounding. rebounding. Yeah, he's yeah. crushing I mean, the rebounding. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll yeah. tell you this right now. Let's stop. 13 and 13. He's not going to be top 10 in rebounding. Like, once and these we, guys start getting there. Yeah. Look, look. I, look. Now we're going to talk about them. This getting off to a good start for them is imperative. Huge. Maybe they make it to the eighth. Maybe they make it. But this is where I think that they are just so. I, I just watching. I don't know what they're doing because if they make it to the eighth seed, they're not that good. But all of a sudden, instead of being instead of like trading Bradley Beal for assets, and then maybe let's say hypothetically not playing well for a little bit, maybe you get the number two, maybe you get the number five pick. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to have the if you're the eighth pick or the eighth uh, spot, let's say you're the 12th pick. So now it's like they're just they're in limbo right now. Do I think that they're going to stay there? Probably. They're missing Rui Hachimura, too. Yeah, no, but they're off to a great start. Like, dude, I got, and look, shout out to my guy, uh, you know, junior Wes Unseld. You know what I'm saying? He's doing a great job up there. Um, he's crushing it. I had him as an assistant coach in Denver and. Oh, yeah, in, yeah, I had him in uh, uh, Orlando. Yeah, and in Golden State. So it's like, dude, he's a, he's a great coach. So I'm happy for them. Do I think that they have the talent to stay where they are? Are they better than Boston? I think it, Washington's, Washington's 12 right now. Boston, yeah, Boston's off the better than Boston. Close start. So, Richard, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just go out on a limb. I think that they are six, seven, or eight in the East. Wizards. Washington. So I'm saying I, Washington. I, I'm listening to you. I'm listening Here, to you. Okay, so we'll just go down the line. Heat, Nets, Bucks. Yep. Sixers. Okay. Knicks. Okay. Okay. Now and now Austin. this for. Now we got Hawks. Hawks. Like some trash. We got, Haw- oh, we got Hawks. Bulls. Sorry, we got Bulls. Hawks, Charlotte Bulls. Hornets. So Wait, no, no. So those six, I would say, are those teams are a lock. And then now you have Charlotte, Washington, and Boston. That's seven, eight, nine. Ooh. You don't have Hawks in there. Oh, Hawks. <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, but to in 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 our defense, this is the strongest the Eastern Conference has been, in oh, my yeah. opinion. In a long The East went 13 and eight last week against the West. Yeah, four that, four of those wins came against the Pelicans. What's but, crazy hey, is hey, the hey, West, the West, I thought the, the Suns, I know, going to be good. Golden State is killing. But like the middle of the pack of the West is a lot like what the East usually is. Like 
four through, through 10 is like, and eh, whatever, what's going, whatever's going on right now. It's not like anybody is that dominant other than Golden State right now. Like, I think the Kings will fuck around and make the playoffs. Let's go. No, calm down. Oh, you want to go to the West? Let's go, Kings. Let's go, Kings. We'll be in the play-in game. The Kings are 10. The Kings are better than Dallas. No. Dallas, wow, Dallas is Dallas out. Just four. beat them. Dallas literally just beat them. Just for context of people that maybe not, they don't watch the entire NBA all the time. So you have the Kings ahead of the Mavs. The Mavs are at four right now, at four and two. The Kings are at three and three at seven, in seven. You've got the Jazz, the Warriors, the Nuggets, the Mavs, the Timberwolves at six, at three and two, Lakers at seven. Uh, No, I'm sorry. Lakers at six, Kings at seven, Portland at eight. Portland's going to get better. Phoenix. Phoenix. Phoenix is at 10. Clippers, one and four at in 12. Listen, they on the struggle bus right now. (laughs) That struggle. The only win was against Portland. And then they got the head busted. The other, I honestly, I honestly, this is this is no lie. Now I know we're in the business of talking basketball. Yeah, I like preseason rankings, and then I like revisiting it about ten games in. Right, because it's like a, like ten games is nothing. Right, like six or seven, seven right. games. That's in. what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So like, if if you if you see a team like if the Clippers are start off one and four, but then they win three in a row, then I'll, you know what I'm saying like which they're capable of doing. They're yeah, super yeah. talented. Now we're not as stressed about them. You can't really judge a team till they've played ten to twelve games because it could be injuries, it could be health, it could be like is that kind of every thing. team? Because um, I feel like at some yeah, at some regard, the, the that doesn't team. always hold for. What? The real teams, the real teams, yes. Like, I'm not going to trip off a team like the Clippers or or a team. Now, the teams that have to do what they have to get off to a good start to be talked about, the Timberwolves, the Hornets, the Wizards. Those How about are the this? Let's to- make a gentleman's bet, Richard. Okay. Hmm. By gentlemen's, that means there's money involved, right? Yes. Or okay. wine, right? Okay. okay. I like wine. Or what? I'll get you a nice bottle of whiskey. Ooh. So... I want your wine. I want maybe your wine. maybe you guys should I'm actually not. create this bet and loser has to donate to a charity. Oh, don't oh you come start on. that shit. Don't you start <laughs> that shit. Don't you start Richard, that. I will say the Kings will have a better record than a Minnesota Timberwolves. The King? Well, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the Kings will have a better record than the Timberwolves? Yes. Where Why are you laughing, Richard? Here? Well, I'm laughing because it's like, look, the Timberwolves actually have a boatload of fucking talent. But oh, like, it's unbelievable. They have they have a lot of talent. But boy, when I tell you, when I tell you, dude, yeah, it's just hard for me to root for the Timberwolves. Not root for the Timberwolves because I don't really give a damn. But just to say that they're going to be able to do something, the Kings are the Kings are overachieving right now, and part of that I will get. I got to give credit to our boy Loot. You know, he, you, you got to give him credit. Like the fact that they're playing at this level, you know, Harrison Barnes is hitting game winners. Balling. Like, like this he was is balling last year. He was on my fantasy team. Hey, HB, that's my dude, but that's my dude. But like, and, and I'll say this respectfully for HB, like Luke is calling plays for Harrison Barnes to win games for him at the end of the game, where you have other teams that have fucking like, like all-stars doing this. And so I just think that, like, ultimately, like, not, not to disrespect their team, they're just going to have to do it by committee all season long. And yeah. De'Aaron Fox, all these guys, if you don't have a horse, and yeah. I look at I look at the – they have two horses, in my opinion, uh, one and a half in Minnesota. Right. You know, a lot of these other teams have, like, three horses. The Kings have one and a half. That's why it's hard. That's why it's hard to, you know – and even a guy like LaMelo. Right, Lamelo and De'Aaron Fox. Right, let's just compare the two. De'Aaron Fox is a great, is an improved scorer, like twenty a game. Like the kid is a gym right. rat. He's going to be an All Star one day. Lamelo makes everyone around him better. That's his Superman skill set. Yeah. Right, and so it's like, yeah, it's easier in Charlotte where you have a guy that knows how to make his team better, a la Steve Nash or Jason Kidd, right. that can elevate the talent level versus asking a scoring guard like De'Aaron Fox to do that. He needs talent and pieces around him, and they don't. So I just think the Sacramento Kings are overachieving right now. And I think a win for them is to be anywhere between 35 wins and 500. Ooh, Richard. No. The best case, the best they case can, scenario for they the could Kings. be 500, Richard. This, the Kings that's have a 500 not made the postseason in 15 years. I feel like it's, the longest, it's like the longest <laughs> stretch in NBA history. Okay. We'll, we'll just so, see. I'm, I'm so going are you taking the bat? 
I'm not gonna take the right that the minutes that the Timberwolves are gonna have a better record than the Kings, or you're saying the Kings are gonna have a better record than Timberwolves? Yeah, he said the Kings better than the Timberwolves. Oh fuck, this is brutal. The fact that I, I how about this? Fact, you put me in a position to take the Timberwolves. The Kings will be in at least the play-in game. I'm rooting for them. Like, go out on a limb, Channing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, dude, a this play in game. You could be 10th in the, the West. West. <laughs> yeah, the West is tough, I guess. <laughs> she, 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 Chan, Channing makes these hard hitting, like, these hard hitting joints. And then Hold on. Like, I have to write down who's all, who I think is in the West. So, you have <laughs> Golden State. Okay, yes. We have, uh... Yes. Are we doing current? Do current for him, Allie. The Jazz, yeah. Warriors, yes. Nuggets. Mavs, right. Timberwolves. I think she said the, the, the Dallas. The, Lakers, the Kings, Kings Dallas. Portland. That's your top eight right now. And then you have Memphis, Phoenix, Spurs, and Clips, the next four. <laughs> Keep talking to me about this play in, bitch. <laughs> Hold on. That's shit. Oh, I don't know. Let's That's just talk about how man. the hell are the there's a lot of there's a lot of girth there in that in that middle bottom. Man. That's the the, sh- the, the shaft the, still the shaft of that the shaft of that fucking the shaft because of that they they're awesome. so disciplined. Who the Spurs? The Spurs. He said, how like, are they still winning? Was, like, it doesn't Spurs matter are... like if they're not flashy or sexy. We've known that over the years, and they may not have like a name that like everyone is like, oh my god, Spurs. But having just watched them against the Lakers last week, like they still play the same way. They yeah. want the basketball. Is and if you don't defend, a double. what? So far. Dejounte Murray is nasty this year. Like, yeah, I don't know what he did over the summer. He must have been working out. No, well, he was also coming off from an ACL two years ago, oh, yeah. so he's starting to like get back to what everybody believed he can be, and that's like a an All Star caliber All Star. All Use your words. <laughs> caliber player, all star caliber player, but yeah. But Tang, right. now you now 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 where do you have the Timberwolves and Kings now that you've seen that fucking thick shaft of a <laughs> Western Conference? Uh, all right, so here's what here's what I think when the here we go, over, here we go, buckle up, here we go. Let's see who gets closer, right? Richard, okay. you got to say this number one, the all Utah right. Jazz, write this down. You Utah have that Jazz number one. Cover. They'll end the season at number one. Oh, we're doing end of the season shit six games in? <laughs> yeah, this is so we know. Or let's do halfway through the season. No, dude, let's let's do, do, let, do the bottom. Dude, let's do the bottom. Let's do the bottom. There's so many games. Why don't we just revisit it at the 40 game mark? Pay yeah, over that, and the then make another one for the end of the yeah. season. Tell me the two teams that you think are going to do better than who at the bottom. Give me the give me the give me nine and ten in the play in. Give me who you got as nine and ten. Uh, hold on. Let me go five, six. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, didn't he show us his college degree before we got on? Yeah, he did. Y'all He's like, oh, Richard, oh. you have one of these. Do you have one of these? I think it's going to be the Mavericks and the, uh, and the Kings are nine and 10. Mavericks nine. You think Kings the Mavericks 10. are going to, I just don't think the Mavericks are a good team. They're I just don't good. like, they have, I don't holes. Think I, they, they have, holes. they have one guy. No, they have a horse. That's one yeah, horse. He's ama- but he's like, he's like LaMelo. He makes everyone around him better. He scores That's a lot. It. And I said this on the air. There is no player more important to a team's success as not an all-star other than Chris Tapp's Porzingis. So like when Porzingis is great, their team is top six. When Porzingis is Porzingis, their, <laughs> their team is bottom. He, he got to show up this year for them to be good. You can't, there you is one thing that. Luca has not done, though. One for play, uh, playoff series. Yeah. So, to your point, Channing. Because he can't do it himself. My man's tired. However, tired in the back. Okay, but this, but again. However, I struggle to really think that they're going to be a play-in. Yeah, Luca is still an all-NBA player, no matter what. His numbers, regardless of how much they win, it's Luca magic. Like, like they're going to give him all-NBA. The Kings might not have an all-star. So do you think the Memphis, I think Memphis is better than Dallas. Where do you have them at? I think I have Memphis at eight. I have Jazz, Golden State, Phoenix will end the season at three, Nuggets, Lakers. Wow, Phoenix at three? Yeah, I think Phoenix is going to have a really You have the Lakers at five? Yeah, Let yeah, me yeah. say this. Look, okay. Look, look, that wait, wait, wait. Nice. I want people to hear me. I want people to hear me. things to figure out. 
All I'm going to say is an unnamed player, an unnamed player uh, after playing the Phoenix Suns told me that he thought it was a fluke. And this was not me. Cause I, and look, look, he, he uh, the unnamed player like hit me up and was like, that was a fluke. That was so a fluke. everyone that's listening is now going to the Phoenix Suns roster and <laughs> no, 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 I'm just, what I'm saying I is, know who you're talking about is my point. Oh, yeah, I know you know who I'm talking about because I like, but what I am saying is this, there's a lot of people that, that don't believe in what the Phoenix Suns was able to do. So like when we talk about a fear, when we talk about them having a long year last year, Chris Paul, they actually have a target on their back this year. There are some people that are not very fearful, fearful of the Phoenix Suns. DeAndre Ayton's contract didn't get done. A lot of shit going on over there in that organization that I don't think that they're going to finish at three. I don't think that they're going to finish out. I think they're closer to a five, six, seven this year than they are at three. That's just... One of the things I love about betting my favorite sports is that I'm always finding new player props or game props that I like. And what's cool about FanDuel Sportsbook is you can combine these props with other bets from the same game to score an even bigger payout. It's called a same game parlay bet and you can only find them on FanDuel. Same game parlay is just one of the reasons I bet with FanDuel. It's easy to register, easy to deposit, easy to find your bet, easy to place your bet fast during a game if you see a trend you like. And the best part, when you win, FanDuel pays your winnings in as little as 24 hours. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today to create a same-game parlay and use promo code ROADTRIPPIN at sign up. New users get their first bet risk-free up to $1,000. FanDuel will refund you up to $1,000 back in site credit if you don't win. That is promo code ROADTRIPPIN so they know I sent you. Disclaimer, 21 years and older and present in Colorado, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. First online real money wager only. Site credit is non-withdrawable and expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See sportsbook.fanduel.com for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado. 1-800-BETS-OFF for Iowa. 1-800-9-WITH-IT, Indiana. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Virginia, Tennessee Redline, 1-800-889-9789 in Tennessee, or visit www.1800gambler.net for West Virginia. This episode of Road Trippin' is brought to you by Bourbon Time. Even if you don't have a traditional nine to five schedule, there is no denying that this past year has changed the way that work and rest intersect. Without a designated office to come home from, we're missing that natural break in our days. Our friends at Jim Beam recognize this phenomenon and they wanna help us out. Beat the burnout and start blocking off the hour of 6 to 7 p.m. as your me time, where you can do what you love for you and only you. And what better way to spend my me time than with my feet up enjoying a nice smooth glass of Jim Beam. So let's make the idea of bourbon time a reality. Join me in reclaiming 6 to 7 p.m. as the happiest hour so you can do whatever it is that makes you happy. And if that involves a glass of bourbon, remember to drink Jim Beam responsibly. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Claremont Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. I'm sticking with Phoenix at three. I, I Who think do you have at six that. and seven, Channing? Uh, Portland, I think at six. And then the Clippers. say that shit because you live there. And you don't want to no, no, get no, harassed. You don't want to get harassed. They win games. Number one, their bench is better. They're, they're winning better. games differently than what they were doing. Uh, I think they're getting used to this new system. They're not going to be last in assists like they were other years before. Every and year. Dame is coming off the ball a lot more. They're getting guys go roll into the hoop. Like Larry Nance helps. Cody Zeller helps. Nurk is going to start playing better. Their bench is getting developed more. I'm going with them. Okay. Uh, this is where I struggle. And this is why I asked the question, if you guys are judging all teams the same, whereas you guys told me, no, it's more middle of the pack teams versus the real teams, right? Because I just don't see why you're making that case for Portland and the Clippers. Um, but yet you're so sure and you call it a gift to put the Lakers at five. Oh, when wow. they have five 
three of, if not five, rotational players out have yet to touch the floor in the in the regular season. You guys what understand. Rotational players, Dolph Shays, uh, Will <laughs> Chamberlain, and Larry Bird. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you? Allie, Allie, this Getting is. Getting for someone who is, who starred in your role next to someone who operates and runs the system to understand the importance of a role player. Yeah, Chang, but Chang never viewed himself as important, and I understand that. <laughs> I was just Chang just got attitude with someone on Twitter because they said that Ron carried you to whatever, and you had a little attitude. Oh, yeah, carry these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but my no. point is... I was like, going to say just... something rude about his mama, but I didn't want to. I felt like I might get fired. Yeah, yeah. I, here's why I say... You continue you to make the case in... for Portland. Year after year after year. Well, they make it every year. That's one of the things that goes into it. It's like, look, same what you said about the San Antonio Spurs. The reason why certain teams will still get the benefit of the doubt after after six games is because we believe that six games is not a good enough sample size. Now, we talk about that's why I said, like, give me 10, 15 games. Because 10, 15 games, if a team is like, if Charlotte is x even if they have a good like even let's say after 15 games if they're 10 and 5 even if they have a drop off they can still sustain a level in my opinion that could keep them at six or seven right that can keep them right there now if if you're talking about the if 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 charlotte was five and ten you would be like oh they have never done anything that would prove to me that they could get like that could turn it around. They, they might play well at the end of the season. They might have a stretch, but it's the same thing with like the Clippers. If the Clippers are, you know, seven and eight after their first 15 and they're sitting there at 11, I'm like T Lou, Paul George, that lineup, they're going to be fine. So yeah. a lot of it has to do with equity of what we have seen, not just in one year, but over like five or six years. Which Same. is why, when healthy, I don't see how you have the Lakers out of the top four in the West. When yeah, healthy, I don't have listen, that either. Stop. It's a, okay, here's why. That's a whole new team. And as you see, they have patches of where it looks amazing, and then they make one sub, and you're like, oh, this looks trash. And then they make another sub. It's like, oh, man, this looks amazing. Plus, every time AD falls, the whole place goes, God damn it, not again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Russ plays better when Braun isn't playing, and then Braun plays better when Russ isn't playing. How long does that take? Defensively, they have spurts where they play really good, but can they sustain that? I, I agree with the defense. Guys, yeah. That's a lot of what ifs. And I don't think that they're the Blakers aren't sitting there like, oh man, we're in we're in fifth place right now. Like that sucks. They're like, oh, we're healthy. This team is built yeah. for the playoffs. Yeah. So I think four or five, I'm not going wrong. I think the Nuggets are a better team right now than the Lakers. Regular season, the Nuggets are a better regular season. They, team they know the they know who they are, and they're yeah. able to just work through it, right? Like I, 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 I'm saying, the Nuggets know who they are currently. Yeah, yeah. They have the same they stink lineup on defense, but yeah. they're going to offense you to death. Yeah, they have the same lineup that they had last year, so there's some continuity there. But like for the but for the Lakers though, I I think that the Lakers are one of those teams that like they can be hovering there, then they can wheel off ten in a row, right? Like I'm not I'm not yeah, and I and I think with the Lakers too, like you you found them where you found them last year because of injuries, but with when healthy, they're not a team that wants to be at the bottom. And I'm not saying that they care necessarily about the standings, but at the same time, it's also indicative if you're healthy of how well you're playing. Yeah, but this is the problem. And it's the same thing that we that happened last year with Brooklyn versus Philly. Yeah. If you're not one, then like shit. You start getting to that two, three spot. And it's the same for them, the Lakers. If the Lakers are, are end up being two and three, and I'm not saying that they can't beat, they can't beat, you know, any team there. But yeah. if you've got to go first round, right? Because you're four, you got to go first round and you beat the five, let, let, let's say Dallas, or you beat the Clippers, whoever it is. Then in the second round, you're going to get the number one seed or you'll get the number two seed. So it's like, not saying that the Lakers can't do that, but like they have to be playing good basketball, in my opinion, yeah. or, or their route is going to be so difficult. That's the best thing about being the number one seed. The first series, you're going to smack that fucking team. You don't give a shit. It'll be it happened last year. It, what do you mean? For who? For the Lakers. 
at but seven taking on the two seed. No, I'm saying if they are, this is the benefit of being the one seed, being the two oh, seed, is that yeah. you get to play against a lower level team and tune yourself up. Right. If you start oh, hovering yeah. lower, if the Lakers are focused on health and they end up being two, three, four, five, now their route is tricky. so much harder. Yeah. That's, that. that's the benefit to being number one. And, and if you're an older team and someone gets hurt or something like if the, if the Lakers probably, if the Lakers were two or one and they were playing against the seven, even with AD a little banged up, even with Braun a little banged up, maybe they get through that and they can get healthy as the postseason happens. But if you're trying to get healthy playing against the number two seed that's been rolling all year, that's a nightmare. No, that, that's why my, my point is, is that I think that they are going to try and figure this out and get it together sooner rather than later so that they are a top 14 that was my whole that was all i was trying to say i'm not trying to say that they're going to finish it last because they're focused on health my yeah, point Allie, is but if we just say if we just say you're right then we don't have a podcast that's rude <laughs> <This is awful>. um <laughs> because no one likes to be told they're right when someone clearly thinks that they're not um okay <laughs> so you have uh, your Allie keeps referencing us getting trolled by this lady on twitter that's what ali keeps making these little side jokes about freaking donations Allison thinks she's so slick this lady was being mean to Channing and I stepped in (laughs) she was bullying me (laughs) she was what she was bullying me she was bullying Channing no people (laughs) people only thing I'm going to say is that one certain jokes we have to be less sensitive about and two don't come in demanding like shit just don't just like like don't let me tell what to do (laughs) <laughs> nobody oh, does really? especially if you get on a soapbox and start yelling at people and start rah, 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 and it's like too like like there's but i will say to- everyone needs a friend like the two of you have in each other because man i'm ah, ready are you sicker or what no ah. listen man he's like, like hi friend here <laughs> 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 really here we are. And then Channing just goes off into the off into the well, Channing knows Does that Dwayne have not... anything to do with this, by the way? Because Channing, but Channing, knows knows that, Chan, Channing also knows at that time, once I show up, Channing's like, okay, well, all the sarcasm, asshole, this is done. He'll take over from here. <laughs> My job is done yeah. here. That's why I entered the chat like, hi, friend here. Yeah. <laughs> this looks like fun. It was like tag team. All right, good. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I literally text Channing. I'm like, Channing, are you looking at this interaction that this lady keeps having with me? And I'm like, lady, I, like, it's okay to be right, but just like, you know, shoot a DM of like, hey, you know. That really, that really upset me. Yeah, it's like, like, not, like oh, hey, sorry. How about, how about you send $10,000? And I was like, wait, damn. Wait, what? Where did yeah. you need that? I was like, damn it. And you're, I didn't understand that. We don't need to get into details because we don't want to, like, we don't want to engage in the Twitter tro- trolls too much, but it was funny. It was Bottom funny. line, don't debate with these two because no. if you debate with one, the other one will step in and it will, oh, for sure. you will not win. I will ruin the whole conversation with yeah. nonsense. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> can't hear. I, this will be a full on gif the conversation. Oh, I won't talk to you. I'll yeah. straight gif you. Yeah, I will straight gif you. Channing couldn't have been more like, I don't care about you. Bye. And Richard couldn't have been more like, I got all the time in the world. What do you want? <laughs> Richard's like, no, the lady looked like she was looking to engage. She was looking to engage. And I was like, she wanted to I'm engage. here. You want to talk to me? I'll take his side. Here, look, I'll argue for him. <laughs> Thank you. Like, like people, Okay, let's, we've let's got five fun. minutes and we did the West. Now let's do your East, make your bet, oh, and then we'll shit. revisit at 40 games. Ooh. And then we'll call it a day. Okay, so, who's, wait, so oh, how about this, Channing? How about this? This is the yeah. bet. This is my bet. Yeah, this Channing, you got the bet in the West. Richard, do you have the bet in the East? The bet in the East is this. Ooh. This is a stretch, but I'm going to say that the Charlotte Hornets are going to end up with a better record than the Chicago Bulls. Ooh, I'm taking that right now. I'm taking now. That. Now let me let me. There's some caveats here. There's got to be like semi health. If Lamelo Ball misses 25 games because of a sprained ankle, it's part man. of the game, Richard. I understand. I'm just saying. I don't want anybody to come at me and like. Uh, but look, if, if the this team- is after six games played, six yeah. and seven games played, this is what you're saying. Everyone's healthy. Everyone's healthy, I think, at the end of the season. Because, like, again, we've already seen a little bit of injury stuff that's going on in Chicago. Zach Levine's got an injured off thumb, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. Well, luckily, there's not two other All-Stars on that team 
who can carry a team. Mar DeRozan looks great, by the way. Shout out the guy Double D, man. He looks outstanding. Vucevic, he's great. What I can't say, Double D. You're such a child. You're such a child. Both of you. knew exactly what he was doing, and you fell for it. Hook, line, and sunk. Oh, anyways. Anyways, go ahead. I, 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 look, I like the Charlotte. I like the Charlotte Hornets. They were a sleeper team last year. They were a sleeper team, like. Bridges so you have the Hornets better. finishing better than the Bulls. Yeah, it might be six or seven, but I'm going to say that, so. that that's going to be my hot take, my scalding hot take. I'm trying now, to think. Look, it's going to be tight. I, I Look, I love the Bulls. The Bulls, they actually look fun to watch. If, if, if you, I'm not talking about ESPN games, people. Channing and I will both agree on this. If I turn on the NBA package to yours, if I turn on that, to watch you play then i'm interested don't just i'm not gonna just tune on espn like all the bulls are playing yes espn marking marquee game i want to listen to doris i want to listen to to mike breen i want to listen to the team yeah cool that's interesting but if i'm turning on on a tuesday and you're in minnesota and i have to have the nba package to, to watch you then you're good and i think the chicago bulls and charlotte hornets are both one of those teams that you would turn on Channing, what are you looking at I, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at this and I'm saying like out of the top eight, you would say Toronto and Washington would be like the two teams that nine, are, 10, right? Because then you have Atlanta and Milwaukee who are nine and 10. So you have Toronto and Washington at nine and 10. Yeah. We're going to revisit this in like 10 games and we're like, yo, what the fuck happened to them? <laughs> what the fuck happened to that team? Yeah, I think New York can sustain this. Right. I think Miami can sustain it. I think Charlotte will be where they are now. Five, six, seven. I think Brooklyn's obviously not going to be eighth. And then Philly is a weird team because Joel's hurt now. So like what happens to their team you without have Ben to, Simmons? Yeah. Channing, you have to be a really good team to handle an injury to one person. The bulls can now handle an energy, an injury to DeMar DeRozan right? If he misses five games or seven games because they have more talent and they can miss, they can miss Levine because they have DeMar and Vucevic and all these guys. So now it's like, okay, they can handle the bumps in the road over the course of an NBA season. That means that, that what you're doing is sustainable, but like, let's be honest. If LaMelo ball, or if De'Aaron Fox, if those guys miss 10, 15 games, that team is going to go fucking to shit. They would say oh, wow. fucking Dallas. If they miss Luca for 10, 15 games for something basic like a sprained ankle, a COVID viol, any fucking thing, that team's going to go to shit. It's just the truth. But there are certain teams that have enough talent that can handle it. Like that's that's just a cold hard trope. That's why when you say can it be sustainable, that means can you play through an injury? Because that's going to happen to your team over the course of the season. And there's certain teams that just don't have enough talent to make it sustainable. Six games in, who wins rookie of the year? Ooh. Oh, I don't know. Cade Cunningham's undefeated, though. <laughs> hey, Loki, he does move just like in the same nuance as Brandon. That's you know who's been I'm impressive, saying. though? I That's don't think he's rookie of the year right now, but you know who's been impressive? Oh. Evan Mobley. Evan Mobley. I, yes, Evan Mobley. Scotty Barnes, he's been Scotty impressive. Scotty Barnes is nice. Yeah. Jalen Green is nice. Evan Mobley. Evan Mobley looks like a silent. He just looks like a creative player. Like yeah. he's literally a body. But like, like doesn't like change. Player. Like, is it like rattled? Yeah. He's a coach's son, too. He's a coach's son. Had a big That's brother that played at USC. He built like, like this. He built like this. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to him. We had him on Road Trip Yeah. Yeah. Evan's great. But like, that's what I'm saying. I like Evan Mobley, too. Shout out JB. JB, man, I think you got yourself a real one. You know what I see when I see Evan Mobley, JB? Job security. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Do you guys have anything else you want to get off your chest? Channing, shout out to Handles. It's back. Richard, you're now on Extra. You guys are doing all the things. Congrats. Doing all the things. Doing all the things. So fun to watch. Very versatile, just like when you guys were players. You got wine coming out. You got wine coming out? Yeah. I still haven't tried the bubblegum one. This is our new our new one. Oh, look at that label. Oh, yeah. And then we have this one. I think that's coming out. You think that's coming out? I know it's hey, coming aren't out. Aren't you? Yeah, what's up on the candles, bitch? Yeah. Oh, shit. I forgot. My bad. Yeah, uh, I want all the candles. I'm telling Excuse you. Excuse me. 
What? I'm the one that said the candles. Are you telling me that I called you and was mad that we didn't have merchandise because I saw that Channing had candles for chosen and then you proceeded to call Channing and be like, give me all the candles, but didn't throw my name out there? No, 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 I don't. No. This the candle conversation <laughs> was prior to this podcast. Yeah, we for talked sure. about the candles on the podcast before. Yeah, after I called, we'll send you like, a yes, nice and I said we I both want I, We right. both jumped in on the cat. See, this is the thing when you have your friends that you're trying to support people. Send me your like, address. Yeah, I got you. I'm like, bitch. All I'm trying to do is tweet, post about it, talk about how this thing smells like burnt hair. <laughs> through a baby diaper. Don't That's you guys also have a friend that has a, a new workout equipment? Yeah, what's the fuck's up on the tonal, Bron? Yo, what's up, man? I'm trying to get my lift. I'm trying to get my Pilates body on. Yeah, man, I'm trying to get my wiggle on. Shout this out to Camus, by the way, because they're the ones that Who? supply all Famous. the wonderful yes. wine that we drink on the podcast all the time when it's not 10 a.m. Um, all right, that'll do it for this edition. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Peace out, mother effers. Great podcast. Put yeah. on the reel. Bye. <laughs>